Hi, welcome to the channel. I've wanted a 3D scanner for a long time. I'm always thinking about how much easier some projects would be if I had one. Whether it's replicating car parts, designing specific mounts for tools in my tool rack, or just working with and designing around oddly shaped items that are hard to measure accurately. So I finally bit the bullet and bought one. Now I'm not affiliated with RevoPoint or RevoScan, but after doing some research, I settled on the Metro X. I chose this mainly because of the price tag. It was $1200 AUD, and from reviewing other YouTubers using it, I figured it'd be a good starting point. Now I've never used a 3D scanner before, so I'm pretty excited to unbox this thing and see what it has to offer. Let's jump right in. Upon opening the box, everything is laid out nicely and packaged well. First up, it comes with a powered turntable, used for scanning small objects in full field mode. Here's the power adapter for the turntable. Comes included with various GPO plug adapters for international use. This is the mounting bracket to connect the scanner to the tripod setup. This is the data and power input cable for the scanner. And here's the scanner's power cable, along with the power brick. It also comes with this wrist strap, uh, which is a nice touch. There's a USB Type-A to USB Type-C adapter included, and it came with an Australian power outlet adapter. It also came with this dude, which I think they include so that you can test the turntable mode. And here it is, the Metro X scanner itself. It feels quite nice in the hand. It's lighter than I expected, uh, but that's probably a good thing if you're holding it up for any extended period of time when you're scanning something. The build quality seems solid, nothing flashy, uh, but definitely not cheap. There's some buttons on the back. Also included was an accuracy inspection results card showing the calibration data, a hard copy of the user manual, and a warranty card. Came with a pack of 500 marker stickers and it also came with a glass calibration plate tucked inside a soft fabric sleeve. The final piece is the metal tripod. It feels like a high quality item. All in all, I was pretty impressed with the number of items in this kit, as well as the overall quality of the items, especially considering the $1,200 price tag. So now it was time to get everything ready to set the scanner up. The next step was to jump on the RevoPoint website and download the software. Now going to the downloads page, I saw the RevoScan 5, scrolled down and clicked the first bit of software I saw. This was a mistake, it was the wrong bit of software. I didn't know at the time, so I went ahead and installed it anyway. So here's me trying to get the Metro X connected. Uh, whatever, whatever I did, I couldn't get it connected. So I went into camera settings, I looked at forums, Reddit, Google, ChatGPT, everything could not get it working and then had a thought. Maybe there's multiple softwares? I suppose I better check. And sure enough, there was a specific Metro X software. So I downloaded that, installed it, and finally got the Metro X connected. The last thing I needed to do before starting my first scan was to 3D print some markers. Now you can order the Metro X's advanced edition, which just includes a marker pack. However, thanks to Marpecio's RevoPoint marker kit on Maker World, I saved myself 297 bucks. What a legend. So here I spent some time sticking the round marker stickers onto the 3D printed blocks. This didn't take me long. And considering the standard version of the scanner comes with 500 marker stickers anyway, it didn't put much of a dent in the pack. Now it was finally time to try out my first scan. So I created a new project and now everything was set up and ready to go. Now for the first scan, I wanted to try it with minimal markers. So I just stuck a couple of markers on the object that I was scanning. And my plan was just to see what it would do. So I kept getting the not enough markers notification at the bottom of the screen. And every time I got this notification, it would sort of freeze. Now it would only partially lose tracking. And when I moved the scanner back into a position that it knew, it picked it back up. 
Apart from the periodic tracking loss, I found it pretty easy to scan. It got the geometry of the object right. There was a couple of missing sections here and there, but it looked pretty good. And now I wanted to try it with the markers. So I sort of just spread them out kind of evenly around the object. I'm not really sure how to do this properly, but I figured you know, it should pick up on most of the markers. And sure enough, I could tell that it was instantly better. There was hardly any holdups. The tracking was nice. It was displaying the object on the screen with no issues at all. So I went ahead and scanned the top side of the object. As you can see, it scanned the object pretty well. It picked up all the markers and it didn't really seem to have too many spots missing. Now it was time to flip the object over so I could scan the back side of it. And I essentially did the same thing. It picked all the markers up fine again and I had no issue scanning the back side. The model looked pretty good. It was missing a couple of little bits so I just quickly went over it with the scanner again and filled those parts in. The next thing I needed to do was fuse the point cloud together. So I used the fusion command. I just left the settings at default for now and let it process. And that came out looking pretty good. So I went to the second scan and processed that as well. And that also came out pretty well. Now it was time to get the model cleaned up in preparation for merging the two scans. The tools available in RevoScan were fairly intuitive. I especially liked the clip command, which removed everything below the line. And from here I used the lasso command to get rid of all the other bits and pieces. So here was the first half cleaned up. Now it was time to do the same thing for the second half. Now finally we could go on to merging the two scans. The first merge I tried was the feature alignment. This is supposed to automatically pick out the features of the two scans and merge them together. But it didn't quite work out in this case, so I opted to manually align it myself. This wasn't too difficult. I basically had to select multiple features in each of the windows on the left. Each selection had its own number which you had to correlate in each window until I had what I thought was enough alignment. The results weren't too bad, there was a lot of overlap and the model was clearly misaligned. However, I'll put this down to my alignment skills, it's the first time I've tried this out. The next step was to mesh it, I left the quality somewhat standard and toggled the automatic hole filling on. Well, as you can see, the results were pretty bad. The surface was pitted and it looked fairly average all around. I suspect my dodgy alignment probably wouldn't have helped this at all. However, I wasn't too worried because I had one more scan to do and this would be utilizing the cross lines laser scanning mode which apparently was a much better way of scanning smaller objects accurately. And spoiler alert, the difference was crazy. Now scanning with the cross line lasers wasn't too bad. At first I was struggling with the tracking but after a bit of jigging around I found the sweet spot and it scanned pretty well from there. Here's the top side of the object. The scan came out quite well, the point clouds looked very uniform and I had pretty well coloured the object green. So I flipped it around to scan the back side. I used the same process to scan the back side, sweeping the scanner back and forth and around the object until the virtual model turned green. I was pretty happy with how both of the scans turned out, so I completed them and started to clean them up using the same process that I did with the full field scans. And now it was time to merge the two scans together. And given that these two scans looked much better than the previous ones, I was hoping the feature alignment would actually work this time. And sure enough it did. The alignment looks like it came out pretty much perfect. I was very happy with the result, so I completed the merge. The two halves merged together looked absolutely fantastic, so now it was time to mesh them. And wow, 
I thought this came out looking absolutely fantastic and I was really surprised it even picked up some of the surface defects from the physical model. This was a huge step up from the full field scan. And finally, there's one last thing left to do and that is to check the scan against the original model. I was very impressed with how accurate the scanned model was. The original model was drawn up in Fusion and 3D printed so there might be a little bit of deviation but all in all this looks fantastic. Thank you for watching the video. I hope it gave you some sort of idea of what the scan is like for a first time user. I have a few projects planned. So if you're interested, throw us a sub and please leave a comment on this video if you have any tips and tricks for me on how to get the most out of this scanner. And with that said, see you next time.